Welcome back to another video of bite-sized software exploitation. In this episode, we're going to jump in and do a brief tutorial on Ropper in order to find gadgets. Gadgets are going to be those basically instructions that we're going to be able to use to eventually build what's going to be referred to as a ROP chain a little bit later where we're chaining different uh, gadgets or instructions together to affect an outcome that we want so that we once we override everything we're going to be able to jump in there and control uh, through various different instructions that are already in the binary itself because at the end of the day, if you want to think about it, and this is particular, of course, with an executable stack, which this is, and that's something that keep in mind, but it's going to serve the purposes of being able to have a brief introduction tutorial to Ropper, building a gadget, and controlling the return address to something that we want. Because if we're thinking about it, we're not going to have some magical functions out there that maybe just automatically give us bin shell or have those magic numbers to cause us to execute whatever the case may be so we're gonna have to take advantage and maybe something out there with regards to priv escalation and stuff is living off the land living off what this binary is going to provide us so let's jump in and see what we have here so I put together, we're not going to take a look at the C code. We have our overflow bin here, and then we have, uh, it's just the shell that I've started uh, that includes just the introductory stuff of uh, from pawn, import, star, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So let's see that what we're doing with here. Overflow bin. Hello, what's your name? Okay. Let's. All right. So just a simple what's your name. All right. So that doesn't seem too exciting. Let's jump into GDB. Uh, break on main because I always like to do that. Info function. Uh, we have main and we have uh, nothing important. Hmm. Spidey senses are going off there. But uh, let's disassemble main just to see what's out there. And I need to spell disassemble correct. Uh, let, that's the shorthand version that I need to get used to doing. So we have a print gets print. So that's printing hello, what's your name? That gets my name or gets the string. And then we print. All right. So there's nothing called to nothing important. Uh, let's just go check out nothing important. Uh, we have our stack frame being set up here. Um, what's interesting here, okay, so it's a little, it's some type of loop because we have two variables being initialized here. Then we have a jump to plus 32, which is down here, which is the comparison. Otherwise, we add and then move back up so just looks like a loop of yeah just a simple loop all right so uh actually probably nothing important from the perspective of uh, anything that we're going to be able to take advantage of except for that this has a, fish, a sufficient uh number of um well, uh, it's going to be a gadget that we're going to be using uh, call RSP, which is calling the stack pointer, but we're not going to be able to take advantage of any of it, the thing like functionality like we've done before of, oh, hey, look, there's a convenient shell, bin shell. Let's uh, use that. So, all right, we're, we're going here. Um, let's do a pattern create as we've typically done. Let me move this just a little bit to the middle here because this is our name now. Congratulations, this is your name uh, for the purposes of running this. And we hit our breakpoint. 
we should get a segmentation fault. And as we remember back in the previous episodes, this will give us, basically we're taking a look at where this overflowed because this is where the stack pointer is right now. This is saying, hey, I want to, uh, this is where it's pointing to next. This is top of the stack, whatever you want to say. So, all right, let's see what that offset is like we've done in the previously because this is going to help us set up um, our simple little chain of commands to get everything going. So, oh, I better put in a offset uh, so that we actually have something. All right, that's good. That's 136. So let's move that over. I'm going to start getting our... Uh, and again, here is just our brief setup that we're going to need, uh, stuff that we've discussed in previous episodes. So let's hit uh, 136 is our offset, and that is the offset um, because the very next thing that we're going to be aware of is uh, the next thing that we're overwriting after this 136 is going to be the instruction pointer. So we're going to say, hey, uh, we're going to provide it with what's going to turn out to be a call RSP uh, where we're going to be saying here's a pointer and the pointer is going to go back and it's going to be basically call RSP and then jump back down. So we're going to be flowing this around. We're changing the pointers to something that we want to the functionality that we want because again, the processor sees bytes and data as bytes and data. It doesn't see it the way we do as we're inputting this in. So when we're finding gadgets, we're just looking for what I'll refer to as magic bytes. Magic bytes being instructions that we want if we have the correct set of bytes here. So let's uh, offset to, uh, or yeah, offset that we need. And that's gonna be just the number of A's that we flow in um, we're going to need an address, which we'll find out here. And then we also are going to need, um, our shell code. So let me just start right there with getting our shell code. And I had, uh, going to paste that in. It's from our previous, which is just the assembly language, um, saying, hey, give us bytes that give us a shell. And this is our shell code. And let's just even this up here because that's what I like to do so that we have all of our comments even. All right, next thing that we're needing to do is get that address because remember the next instruction after we overflow everything is going to be the return address that we're going to be wanting to control. We don't want to give it back to the main functionality. We want it to be able to, um, to control the functionality of what it sees next. Ideally, we want to provide it with what's going to be, hey, look at this. This is what we want to execute functionality. So let me quit out of that because we're going to have our introduction to Ropper. Again, Ropper is a fantastic tool that's finding gadgets. Um, it's just, it's, it's magical. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here by gadgets or what are referred to as gadgets. So here, the way to take a look at this is if you're put, these are our addresses or this is the memory address. And if we say point to this address, this is what it's gonna see is the this instruction CLI return. Or if we provide it to this address, test EAX, EAX, jump of equal, call REX. So this is why I'm referring to as gadgets or what they refer to as gadgets out there. And for the purposes of this, uh, and here's just another example. So 401, or 401, zero CC, if we provide that pointer to 
uh, RIP, it'll it'll go and execute jump RAX. But the one that we are looking for in this particular exercise and tutorial is going to be this 401179, which is call RSP, call the stack pointer. And basically, uh, that is the address, um, what turns out to be in that nothing important. There's some type of magical bytes up there that provide it that such that it's a call RSP instruction. And we're going to say um, 0x401179. And that's our call RSP instruction. So we overflow. Let's let's actually get our chain our data chain going on here. Remember we're doing bytes here. We need to signify because it's Python 3 and we need to tell Python, hey, which type of data we want to input offset. Because we're sending in 136 of them. All right, we're going to use our packer here, packer64 uh, for, and um, actually it's going to be our address. We can just shortcut it to address plus our shell code. So let's briefly just run through what's happening here. Uh, one second, P interactive, just finish it off. All right, we found the offset. We're going to send in junk data to fill everything up up until our return address. The return address is going to be then basically overwritten, uh, changed to this address, which points to call RSP. It's going to say, oh, go back to the stack pointer, because then after that overwritten address is going to be the shell code. And then it goes back and, oh, shell code, execute. And it just sees the processor sees the data. It's going to execute it. And off we go. And we should have a shell. And so let's just hit save here. All right. Clear out here. All right. Again, what we have is we have our overflow bin. And as a, um, you know, seeing what it does again. Hello, what's your name? Tyson. Nice to meet you, Tyson. Okay, well, that's nice and everything, but it'd be much cooler if this would give us some shell code, right? All right, I think so too. So Python 3 overflow 3.py. All right, switching to uh, interactive mode. It's going to ask us here because I didn't hit the receive line. Um, let's just hit enter. Hello, what's your name? Nice to meet you. Now we grabbed it. And um, let's see, who am I? I'm, well, Tyson. But that's not the Tyson that we were putting up up there. This is a who am I instruction. Uh, do we have power to list? Oh, we do. Uh, change directory? We do. Magical. So we obtained a shell through our execution of, find, well, finding a ROP instruction or gadget that allows us to point to it, then says, hey, uh, jump it back off the stack. So we will be building on ROP chains, building on this theory in future episodes. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button if you do. Uh, much appreciated. Until next time, enjoy. Thanks.